What is going on? What is going on? Welcome to another audition of the Corporate Citizen. It's Glendon Cameron here. And I'm about to have a little discussion with you guys. There was a comment, and I, one of the things I've just I promised myself I wasn't going to do was to get into these little comment exchanges with moist men. And uh, there was a comment, and I just deleted it and blocked the guy, that fear-mongering. And me stating that Airbnb and Toro are going to be saturated in the next six to 12 months is fear-mongering. I want you guys to do a little research. I'm asking you to do something a little extra. Go to the front of this channel, and there's a little search bar a little glass, a little hourglass where you can search and put in no eBay, no Amazon, more money. There's four or five videos. And watch those videos and see that I predicted with stunning accuracy what was going to happen to Amazon FBA years before it happened. Years before it happened. Here, here's the thing, guys. As an entrepreneur, who's been in business 23 years, I've seen a few things. I've seen a few rodeos before. And any time that you have a socially media driven business opportunity, it is just a matter of time before it becomes saturated. Like one of the things, like I, if you've noticed that you haven't seen any more car business videos, right? Uh, I discovered that putting BMWs on higher car was a winning recipe, and I actually put it on YouTube. Now I'm competing. There's like 50 of them on there now. Once again, and like when I started the car rental business, I had no clue to what I was doing or what I was getting myself into. And I was just sharing, being 100% transparent about what was working and what wasn't working. But I am, to a degree, a social media figure. It's kind of funny. Some of the women that I've dated have found the YouTube channels. It's very interesting. And sometimes I forget that. I forget that. And um, there's some other stuff that I have discovered about Hire Car that I will never, ever talk about in an open forum. Because I would be creating more competition for myself. Now, one of the things is I have, majority of my BMWs are rented out. I've got like, now, you know, I, I'm not even gonna go into that. I will go into that into the course and some of the stuff that I've learned, some of the mistakes that I've made. But I was watching Anton today and Anton was going off. Anton was going off. I haven't, I uh, had the time to really consume a lot of his content. Every now and then I will check some stuff out. And he was going off and he sounded like the cranky hustler. <laughs> Here's the thing, guys. And I don't mean to be dismissive. I don't mean to be disrespectful. But there's a lot of things that I know more about than you do. And how did I find this stuff out? by actually being in business and actually running experiments and doing stuff. I do more in a month than the average person does in a year. Let me say that again. I do more in a month than the average person do in a year. Like this is a Saturday afternoon because I finally got a handle on the car business where it's not ripping, run, running me ragged and doing all this other stuff. And this is funny. And this is someone who's renting the Range Rover. He's like, yeah, Toro's better for Range Rovers. And that Range Rover that he's renting is too old to go on Toro. And I am like that close to saying screw Toro and then transitioning the cars that I bought from Toro. Because I will say this. I regret buying those cars for Toro. Um, I could have bought way more cars for higher car if I hadn't bought those cars for Toro. And I got sucked into the Toro thing, the Toro thing. And right now, I'll be honest with you, I, I had someone rent a car last weekend and I woke up one morning and I had some future bookings. Five future bookings canceled. Canceled. At the moment, I don't have any Toro 
bookings, not a one. And I've got airport delivery. Now, part of that is I refuse to be the cheapest guy on hire car. And once again, it's already starting. It's going to be much worse six months from now. Uh, I had a comment that someone bought him 500 course. He taught him how to do Airbnb, do Toro, and there's him 500. There's uh, numerous people teaching people how to put cars on Toro. Look what happened to Amazon FBA, and you will see that that's what's going to happen to Toro, and that's what's going to happen to Airbnb. I had a friend who has some space behind her house, and she was thinking about, if you don't know what glamping is, it's an elegant form of camping, where people are staying in these fancy tents and stuff, and they were going to turn it into a glamping retreat. And we were talking about it, and I was like, all right, you're looking at investing $50,000 into this, and you're not looking at making any money until you recoup that $50,000 to get the glamping, to get the toilets and all this other stuff. And you know, when we really got into it, like I said, um, Airbnb is slowing down. Toro is slowing down. And many of these other template businesses, anything that someone is teaching a specific course, like how to do Airbnb, how to do Toro, how to do, um, Amazon FBA, anyone that's teaching a course like that and has a social media presence, it is just a matter of time before these platforms are saturated. And this is why I teach what I teach. In your training, and like I said, um, I don't know if I'm going to do a training tomorrow or not. I don't know yet. But in your training, I talk about which business to pick and some of the things you should look at some of the things you should evaluate because one of the things that I am seeing is that people are piling on to these limited business opportunities like Airbnb. You know, I, I've met several people. I, I was uh, with a Lyft driver yesterday and she was talking about, you know, she used to do Forex. She lost a bunch of money. You know, she was trading options that was working out for her. And her and her boyfriend was thinking about putting a car on Toro. And she was like, I don't know. It's like everybody's talking about Toro. She said, it scares me. I said, it should scare you. Six, 12 months, Toro's going to be very expensive. If you put a car on Toro, do not go out and finance a car for Toro. Right now, I am making this prediction. Six to 12 months from now, you're going to see videos on YouTube from people who are being honest and saying that their Toro car got repossessed because they couldn't make the payments. That's what's coming. That's what's coming. This credit crunch, you're going to wake up and you have a HELOC, $150,000 HELOC. You're going to wake up one morning and log into your banking account and see that bad boy is gone. This is coming. And there are many people who call me saying, Hey, if you want to use credit, you need to get all the credits you can now because they're going to start clamping down on credit. That's fear mongering because I'm actually telling you what's coming, what's going to happen. Right now, I checked it today. The number of 30 something to 50 something women who are on the Sugar Baby website is blowing my mind, blowing my mind. I think I was doing this this time last year. I was talking about it and like there was a few old chicks on there that it was hilarious, but they were like, you could go through five, six, seven, ten 10 pages and you'll see one. Now it has turned literally every other chick on there is 30 something, a big, big dramatic shift, which is an indicator that the economy is getting very very bad for some people. Let, let me go and tell you who the economy isn't getting bad for. It isn't getting bad for entrepreneurs. The economy isn't getting bad for tech workers. The economy isn't getting bad for government workers. And the economy isn't getting bad for people who are 
in close proximity to someone. Like, I mean, I've helped out like three friends. It was like, here's some money, you can have it. Just boom, here it is. No one have to pay me back, we're not gonna do that because you're already struggling and that's just gonna add more pressure to your pressure filled life. Here's like 5,000, have it, enjoy, God bless you. And one of the things that you guys, like I know personally know people who are going through it in this economy. I personally know people who are going through it and I personally know people who are thriving. So I see the bad side of the economy and I see the good side of the economy but don't come here on YouTube just talking about the good side, like some YouTubers, like hey, it's all rainbows and dandelions and cookies and cake and punch and we're having a party over here. I'm about to tell you what is going to be coming is going to be so bad for some people. Let me say that. Let me qualify that. Some people. There are some of you, you won't even be touched. You, you've got a good government job or maybe you're a tech worker and you're just going to keep, you, you're, you're not even going to notice this. You're not even going to notice what's happening. You will notice that maybe gas went up a little bit, price of food went up a little bit. That's what you would notice, but you're not going to really notice the economic carnage that is coming to that bottom 50%. That bottom 50% is about to go through economic hell. Once again, with Uber and Lyft drivers. Right now, Uber and Lyft are having to put out incentives to get people to drive. Six to 12 months from now, they will have an abundance of drivers. Because what's gonna happen is, these people got this government money and these people were protected. During the pandemic for the last 18 to 20 months, people were protected. Homeowners who could not pay their mortgage were protected. People who got late behind on their cars, they were protected. The repo man stopped repoing. People got late behind on their credit cards. The credit card companies were working with people. People were protected. And during this protected state, people actually made some bad decisions. Once again, if you can look back, it's on record. I said, look, you know, take this time, learn a new skill. Don't just sit at home, smoking weed, having sex, playing video games. What do people do? Smoke weed, play video games, have sex. And they did not take advantage of an opportunity. The pandemic was an opportunity to level up. If you were paying attention, it was an opportunity to gain new skills, to um, manage your money better. It, it was just an opportunity that a lot of people went to sleep on. And these are the people who are going to be suffering. I'm about to tell you what I'm doing personally. I am not taking on any undue debt. Like, I know that this sounds crazy, but I'm not like, let's see, these credit cards here. Not one of these credit cards has anything on it. I got one credit card in my wallet that has like 800 bucks on it. But 99% of my credit cards don't have a balance. And I don't care if they close them, really don't care. I am not going to be spending on my credit. I am not going to do anything in my personal name from a credit standpoint. Nope, refuse to do it. And I'm not taking any on the, any undue debt. I'm going to uh, start stacking cash again. I'm not buying any more cars. I am going to start prepping for winter. Because winter is coming. And it's going to be really, really bad if you are not in the position. I am getting ready to start a credit repair agency. That's going to be a booming business during this winter. And winter ain't going to last just for like three, four months. No, 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 no. Winter is going to last some people five and ten years. You want to know why? All right. Once this, this is something else that happened. People who are not working. People who were protected, the protected class, they developed some bad, bad habits. Like one of the girls I date who still has her job because her job is a lot, she's a tech worker, she makes $130,000 a year. She could never go back in the office. 
You know why? Because she does her work, and every day at 3 o'clock, she goes to the gym. <laughs> she could not, like, do this if she was working in a regular in the office. She couldn't be doing this. Like, hey, I'm about to leave the office and go to the gym. Plays with her dog. She does whatever. So she is good. She is good. But there are people who are not tech workers who have developed the same appetites. They, you know, because luxuries once tasted become necessities. Once you get a taste of freedom, autonomy, being able to do what you want to do when you want to do it, that tastes so good. That tastes so good. Oh, oh man, I'm going to keep eating this even though you can't eat eating it because the protections are slowly starting to go away. Like I said, I don't think there will be another stimulus check. However, if another one magically appeared, I wouldn't be shocked. Look at Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer with this uh, group of people in office. I wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised. I don't think it's going to happen, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did. So with the stimulus checks going away, with the unemployment going away, we've got reportedly 7 million people, right? It's more than 7 million. These people have families, they have children. So when the unemployment stopped, it didn't just affect 7 million, it probably impacted about 30 million. Yeah, about 30 million people. When I say 30 million, these folks who were eating off of this, they ain't eating off of it no more. And once again, as this stuff starts to filter through the economy, because right now we were living in a state of suspended animation. The economy wasn't real. People were getting laid off. The stock market was booming. The economy wasn't real. Real marketplace, marketplace forces, dynamics were not at, they were not engaged. They weren't happening. Now, real marketplace factors and dynamics are starting to filter back into the economy. And they're not going to be pretty. They're not going to be pretty. You know, if you want to come to here, shout out to Anton Daniels because I started laughing. <laughs> Dude was going off. It was hilarious. Um, he, he reminded me of my cranky hustler videos. When I would come here on YouTube and literally cuss you guys out, that the cranky hustler, the cranky hustler, I haven't done, a, I haven't had a cranky hustler moment in a minute, but Anton had fully embodied the cranky hustler because he was like, y'all know what you're talking about. Titled it, when a meteor talks, you need to shut the fuck up. I was like, <laughs> I was like, man, I know how he feels. I know how he feels because, all right, yes, I make money from YouTube. I make money doing this, 100%. And there are times that, but see, there's a difference between me and other YouTubers. I don't lie to you to make money. I don't tell you lies. I don't blow smoke up your booty and tell you it's rainbows. I don't do that. But um, when I sit down and I do a video and I'm telling you what's coming, that's for you to take that information and govern yourself accordingly and prepare and protect yourself, not to sit here and debate with me, because this is one of the things I find to be amazingly humorous. And I'm, I'm about to talk to my crypto people. I make more money per month than your crypto investments have made in five or six years. But for some reason, because you got lucky once again this is something that is a result of the pandemic you got lucky and you saw your crypto appreciates now you want to tell me how to make money i literally saw one of my people who love me fighting with this fool and it's like but yeah he already you know glendon and that dude he already makes money but if he was buying crypto he made more money completely tone deaf and I put up a post in the community section talking about 84% of millionaires don't own crypto. And many people completely missed the point. When you're rich, you ain't trying to get rich. See, when you get rich, um, 
your life is different. It's very, very different. You start thinking about how do I maintain this? Not how do I get more? You start thinking like, okay, I'm worth 30 million. What do I need to do to maintain this? Grow it slowly. That's, that's your mindset because here's something that disappears when you get rich. Normal bills. I don't worry, I'll pay cash for my car, so I'm not worried about car payment. Uh, my business pays for my house. Uh, I'm not worried, I, my, no, I, don't, I don't have normal people bills. My biggest expense is food. Other night I went out to Howe's. If you don't know what Howe's is, Howe's Steakhouse. If you're in Atlanta, you should check it out. It's uh, some of the best meat on the planet. I dropped $300 for a dinner day for two. I don't care. I mean, it was like, that's, that's my splurge. That's what I spend the majority of my money on with this outside of business and other things. And like, I don't even think about it. I just like, boom. And once again, using the business credit card. Um, I figured out some stuff and one of the things I'm gonna talk about in the training is all the things that you can start to write off on your taxes. It is like, I had my assistant uh, catalog because you know I haven't, I've been saving the receipts but I haven't been putting them in QuickBooks. And we're gonna do that next week because I gotta sign up for QuickBooks. Um, but, I am looking at probably getting a sixty to eighty thousand dollar re refund because of this car rental business that I started. Because I get to write off the gas, I get to write off the insurance, I get to write off the repairs. All of those nasty repairs are tax write offs. I get to write off mile. I get to write off so many things that because I have a holding company strategy, those deductions and those business expenses are going to subtract on what I have to pay for taxes because um, my taxes I don't claim any dependents so they be knocking me upside the head to tune the 10k a month I pay in taxes so I'm about to I'm calculated that I'm not I'm not going to get back to FICA and the Social Security but on Georgia State and the federal I'm getting refunds big refunds and what am I going to do? I'm going to start another business so I can do it again in 2022. See, I just told y'all something. I just told y'all how to play the game and get a refund. And there will be some people like, oh my God, he bragging. Oh my God, he bragging. Oh my God. You know, I, you, you, you know, I had someone who, who, who was trying to speak to me from peer to peer. And if you come to me to peer to peer and I don't personally know you, I have friends who are way richer than I am. I know they're richer than them. You know, and when we have conversations, they never come at me like that. Even though they are way richer than I am. They just cool as all get out. But you internet moist men be trying to like, well, I'm a successful business owner. And this is where I do my Mason Autry. If you never heard me talk about Mason Autry, Mason Autry was my manager at Renecrate. And Mason was extremely thorough, extremely thorough. Mason, if you tell Mason something, he like, nah, then he will go ahead and do his own research, his own due diligence to make sure you were telling him the truth. Like, hey man, I call, you know, and th th this, this was the craziest thing. I was trying to reach this heavy duty dude that we wanted to set an appointment with. And I called him, I called him, I was like, I can't reach him. Mason picks up the phone, dials the number, the guy answers and Mason sets the appointment. You know, you know how I felt? I had been calling this guy for two weeks. Mason picks up the phone and calls him and he answers and sets up the appointment. And Mason's like, are you sure you're trying to do your best? I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> That's what, and see, I get thorough on you guys. It's like, what do you mean when you say successful? Please define that. Because successful to you may be failure to me. Because like I said, having the asset base of $2 million and making $80,000 a year, that's not winning for me. For the average person who's broke, who doesn't want to work, that's winning. For me, that ain't winning. That's not winning. I'm like, I like more money than that. I like much more money than that. So. 
One of the things that I'm, I'm starting to do, because if you notice, the content has changed. Um, the Apex Predator, I understand that you guys like who you like, and you don't like it when I actually, from a fact standpoint, go after one of your favorite YouTubers and actually show you that they're full of shit. Y'all don't like that because you like who you like. So one of the things I'm going to focus on is business. And, you know, like I got a series of videos coming up, the six ways to get customers. And I don't know if I'm going to do is one big video or six different videos because there are six ways that you get customers. And I'm going to start talking about that stuff because Virtually no one on YouTube is talking about how to get customers, which is one of the basic and most important things to start in the business. So I'll be talking about that and I'll still be talking about the fear mongering. He's fear mongering because he's telling us the truth. He's telling me something I don't want to hear. I want to be I want to be assured that I can put my car on Turo and make a lot of money. Don't don't be pissing on my dream, man. Don't be pissing on my dream. I want to go out and finance 10 cars and I want to put them on Turo. Do not tell me anything that's going to tell me that I'm not going to be successful or my money. I don't want to hear. I don't, no, 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 no. I don't want to hear that, Glendon. I don't want to hear that because everyone's got Turo hyped up. Everyone's talking about Turo. I am doing Turo. I don't care what you say. You fear mongering. Uh, Turo's a winning stretch. I'm going to do it. And six to 12 months from now, you're going to be like, I hate Glendon Cameron. I hate him because he was right. That's what you're going to be doing. Because see, once again, uh, to the group of people who love what I do and love the information, the insights, much love to you. And there's another group of people who watch to see me stumble and fall. Except I don't do that at all. And every now and then, yeah, I stumble. I bump my head. I make a mistake. I'm human. But the majority of the time, my predictions are spot on. I got like a 95% accuracy rate. So winter's coming. You're going to see like a lot of people will be driving for Uber. Because this is something else too. And this is another signal. Way more women are driving for Uber and Lyft than ever before. Ever before. And whenever I get in the Uber or Lyft, I always ask them like, you do this full time? What do you do? And so many people have gotten laid off lost their jobs that they had to start driving for uber and lyft this is a social signal it's a big social signal so you're seeing in like one chick who was driving lyft she was a hot little mama i mean yeah she had a mask on but you could tell she was cute even under that mask you could tell she was cute and i'm just sitting there like this type of chick is driving for Uber and Lyft now? Hmm. That's a social signal. See, there were many jobs that really pretty women didn't do, like driving for Uber and Lyft. I want you to think, three years ago, the kind of women, if you had a female driver driving for Lyft or Uber, who did you see? You saw fat chicks, homely chicks. Yeah, they were driving for Lyft and Uber. But... When's the last time you saw someone that was so cute that you, you were just sitting there like, I'm about to be inappropriate here. <laughs> I'm about to say something inappropriate. I like what I see. Um, if you take a lot of Ubers and Lyfts, you're going to see this. You're going to see a lot of very attractive women driving for Uber and Lyft, which didn't happen three, four years ago. This is a social signal to what's happening in the economy. Even pretty women need money. They need money. <laughs> they like to eat. They like to live a place to stay. They like to pay their bills. I'm saying, man, I'm saying. So what you're going to see in the coming year is going to blow your mind. Now, Biden came out with his vaccination mandates. And this is the reason that Biden came out with his mandates. With the Delta variant and the other mutant strand, school age children, high schoolers, and college students are getting it and they're getting sick and they're dying. So 
we're entering into the second or third quarter of this thing and it's getting worse. Now, there are a lot of you, I'm not taking the jab, and <laughs> let me break it to you gently. You wake up in the morning, you flick on the light switch and the light switch doesn't come on because um, you ain't paid the power bill. Or you get in your car, you don't have no gas. And the only thing standing between you eating and having power and gas is taking the shot. You will take that shot. And you want to know why? You don't have enough money to stand upon your principles. How do I know this? Let's go ahead and look at the recent um, flood of women on the Sugar Baby website of 30 to 50 years old. You think these women woke up and said, I'm going to be someone's dedicated whore? I'm going to be fucking this 65-year-old man with his wrinkled dick to get some money? You think they woke up thinking that was going to happen? Many of them, and let me, let me tell you how it happens. This is going to happen tonight. It's a Saturday night. There is some girl right now who's getting ready for her sugar daddy date. And they're going to go out and have a nice meal. Then they're going to go to a hotel. They're going to go back to this place. And they're going to fuck. And she's going to grit her teeth. She's gonna, and she's going to be imagining it's Chad or Edward or Henry or someone other than this old motherfucker sliding his wrinkled dick up in that tight little pussy. And she's going to do it and she's going to get paid and she's going to go home and she's going to be disgusted with herself. She may get in the shower and try to rub it off. And then when, when Sugar Daddy calls again, guess what she's going to do? She's going to go. And the second time, it won't be as bad. And then the third time and the fourth time and then around the fifth time, she's going to stop imagining that Chad or Henry is fucking her because she's like, I kind of like this old motherfucker. Feel kind of good. See, because this old motherfucker is giving her money and making her life easier, affection's going to start to drop. I guarantee it. And just like a lot of these women never, ever saw themselves being a dedicated whore, a prostitute. That's what a sugar baby is. I'm not going to miss words here like, it's a special relationship between a young man, a young woman, and an old. No, you, you his bitch. You were his little whore. And just like many of these women never saw this coming, never saw that they would be listing a profile on the website to be someone's paid whore. They never saw this coming. Winter has come for a lot of women. It is already here. Winter is like the snow is blowing, the little owls going hoo, hoo, hoo. It's cold and it's shivering out there. And just like these women, who never thought that they would do it. And right now, there's someone who's like, I ain't taking that jab. I don't, you know, I don't care if it's FDA approved. I, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. This is what's going to happen. If taking that jab is what between you eating, having power, and gas in your car, guess what you're going to do? Just like that young sugar baby going to take that wrinkled up dick tonight, your ass going to take that jab. Pretty much. You could come on YouTube, you could leave stuff in the comments and go, Glendon, you're wrong and you're crazy and I don't know why you're doing all this. And a lot of you who are like, I ain't doing it. It becomes economic. You will do something strange for a little change. Just like these women on the sugar baby websites. You will be just like them. You're just like, I ain't taking that jab and you will be lined up and you'll be taking it just like just like she taking that wrinkled dick. You would be doing it because here's the thing, guys. Most of you don't have enough money to stand on your principles. I have enough money to stand on my principles. I will not lie to you to sell you a course. I'm not going to say you can do this in two or three weeks. I'm not going to hype you up like that. I'm like, look. Look, bro, first thing is you got to get your containers, your corporate structure and stuff. You got to get that together. And then defining the customers part, whether you got like a service business, it's going to take you a little time. It's going to take you a few months just to find customers. I ain't going to lie to you. I, if, I if I lied, I would make a way lot, a lot more money, but I'm not going to lie to you because I'm an ethical YouTuber. I'm not just going to sit here and blow smoke up your booty and tell you it's rainbows or that it's a, it's a fancy new enema. 
Because just like these sugar babies who never, ever thought they would be sucking a wrinkled dick for some cash, yo ass will be taking that vaccination shot. Now you ain't gonna come here on YouTube and like Glenn, you were right. You ain't, I, I ain't even waiting on that. Cause a lot of y'all don't even have that type of character. You don't even have that type of character where you're like, you know what? You were right. I, I went ahead and took it cause you know, I need to make some money. Mm -mm. You just gonna take it and keep your mouth shut. And you, some of you gonna still be in the comments like, I ain't taking that shot. Knowing good and well, you got both doses, both of them. And once again, when winter hits, because this is what I think is going to happen. I hope I'm wrong. But I feel that once we have this first significant cold snap, I think COVID is going to go nuts. I think hospital hospitalizations are going to go through the roof. And we may be looking at another lockdown, which for people who have been unleashed from the first set of lockdowns, they're in the college games, they're doing concerts, they're going to festivals, they're living their best life. And then... Oh, wait a minute, you, we got locked down again. I've noticed that more and more people are wearing masks again. Uh, we're like, I, I have a feeling that COVID's going to go nuts when it gets cold. Just a feeling. I, hopefully I'm wrong. I, I, hopefully I am wrong. I'm dead wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong. But if I'm not wrong, then you're going to see a lot of craziness because this is the funny thing with you guys in this shot. Every day you eat food that is banned in the UK. You know why it's banned in the UK? Because it contains ingredients and agents that cause cancer. And they have banned this food in the UK. But in the United States, hey, knock yourself out. And you're eating it every day, not even worrying about that tumor that's growing at the base of your brain because you're eating this garbage food. Nah, you ain't even worried about that. So, like I said, it's, it's a funny conversation, but I feel in the end, by December, vaccination rates will be at 80, 80 percent, if not higher. And once this we go through this. What I call snapback, where we go through it, where infection rates start skyrocketing and stuff, they're going to start literally forcing people to get vaccinated. And once again, if getting vaccinated is what stands between you eating, you having a place to stay, you uh, putting gas in your car, your ass gonna get vaccinated. Facts, just facts. So I know you can refute me. You can say what you want in the comments and all this other stuff. But once again, most of you don't have enough money to stand on your principles. You don't have enough money to stand apart, to stand alone. It's like, hey, I'm not gonna do this because you don't have no money. And speaking of money, if you wanna have some money in the future, once again, I'm an ethical YouTuber. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you, oh, you're going to do this in three or four weeks. Try like six months of shaping up some stuff. Go ahead and get in the corporate papers. I'm getting ready to do some additional training because like there's some training in there because like with all these Toro, with Toro and Airbnb, everyone is jumping into these businesses, right? And there, it's just a matter of time before they're saturated. So, but here's the good news. There's a million and one businesses that you can start that are not saturated, that you can actually make a lot of money in. Who figured? So I'm going to be doing that and I'm going to do some service business training because you can start a service business and in the month be up to two or three grand. That's very doable with a service business. So we're going to be talking about service businesses. We'll be talking about businesses and we'll be talking about some other stuff. Because like I said, I'm getting ready to change up the content on this channel and be talking about business type activities and business things because that's what I feel like. I feel like doing it because, you know, I'm, I'm just sitting here like I make jokes about the sugar babies and stuff, but honestly, it's pretty damn sad that there's some young girl that's going to be taking some old dick tonight. She's going to be fucking someone who's old enough to be her grandfather so she can get some money because she don't have no skills. Don't be like these sugar babies and don't be out here in the winter with no skills. Your skills are your coat. If you don't have a coat this winter, your ass is going to freeze. So you need to get some skills. You need to learn how to do some stuff. Because like I said, you know, I make my jokes. I think it's kind of funny that a lot of these chicks out here selling pussy. That's what they're doing. They're selling pussy. 
um, to get some money because they don't know how to do anything else. Don't, don't be in that position. Don't be in that position. I want you guys to be successful, to be healthy, to be happy, and to make a lot of money. That's what I want for you. But you're not going to make it with me lying to you and gassing you up and saying you can do simple things and you can get these complex results. It's just not going to happen. So go ahead, get in the corporate papers, links below, price goes up October 1st, and I will see you guys in the next one.